Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm Old Car Auto Guy, and today we're going to be working on... No, not the Cordoba behind me. Today, we're working on Junior's car. You see, his car's inspection is due at the end of the month, and we've got a couple of front end parts that we're going to be putting on it. So he's going to be back here in just a few minutes to give me a hand. Let's get to it. So what we've got to do to get this thing to pass inspection is it's got a outer tie rod and two inners. So not that the inners are necessarily bad, but not too long ago we replaced a outer tie rod on one side, we're now doing the other. And we figured while we're in there, we've got the other two just to be sure. We're going to have to send this thing out for an alignment. So for what they cost, we might as well put them on while we get everything apart. And then when we get the alignment done, everything is brand new. Don't have to worry about it. Now I'm sure that some of you Ford guys and some of you Dodge guys out there, Rust Belt Mechanic, Ron, you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about when I make reference to these stupid, stupidest ever invention of tin caps on a lug nut. So what we've got here is we've got a socket that is stuck on the lug nut because of those swelled up tin caps. Because we live in the rust belt, I'm sure that's the exact reason why that the stainless steel and the rust underneath things swell up in behind and just make it a little difficult to get these lug nuts off. But I shake my head every time I have to take a wheel off of a vehicle and they've got these silly little, you know, capped lug nuts. Why not just go with, you know, chrome or chrome plated or I don't know. Whatever happened to the good old fashioned empty hollow acorn nuts. Anyways, so we're gonna get the wheels off and we're gonna start tearing things apart on the tie rod by then. Hopefully Junior will be back and uh, he is going to actually take over doing some of the work so I can teach him a little thing or two about front end parts. Right, time for a bigger hammer. All right, so it is totally just a coincidence that Junior and I are wearing our cleater shirts today. Just coincidence. You got the memo though, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna teach Junior here how to properly disassemble and reassemble an inner and outer tie rod. On this side, we've got to replace both. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, Alex, is you're gonna wanna grab the 18 millimeter ratchet wrench and spin that nut off right there. And make sure you're going lefty loosey righty tighty. There you go. Oh, just using that by hand now. Right? Well, it's one of those nylon lock nuts, so sometimes they don't come off very easy. I can spin it. But... Okay. So you're gonna want to leave it on there, probably two or three threads. Which is about there. Yep. And then you're gonna want to grab the big hammer. What you want to start with is just give her a big whack up, and hopefully, and don't hit your. Hard enough. Pretend you hate it. There you go. So now that you've got that off there, what we've got to be able to do is we've got to be able to loosen that nut because those are tightened together. Yeah. And then count how many turns this one comes off. All right. Okay. Okay. Did it crack? Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's all you need is for it to crack. So basically what you're gonna do is you wanna be you wanna count how many turns it, it comes off because when we put the new one on, yeah. we wanna try and get it as close as possible so that you're not gonna chew the tires off before you get to the alignment shop. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the outer that we took off and it's got a little bit of play in it as far as it's it's not staying in one spot, not like it should be when it's new. Uh, this wasn't the problem. The problem is with the inner. So we're going to switch the inner out and while we've got that one off, we're going to put both inner and outer on this side. The other side is just an inner. So um, this one's not bad, but just like I said, for the, for the price of them, you know, 20 bucks or so, 
we're gonna replace everything. So if you come in here, you'll see that this is the inner tie rod. It does have play in and out. I can't make it clunk right now because I got no leverage on it. But if it's good, it should stay up when I let go of it. And there's just it's just not there anymore. It's sad. So we're gonna get the boot off and uh, try and get in there with the tool, get it spun out and uh, put the new ones in. So we are now at the point where we have the inner tie rod spun out here and we had our trusty inner tie rod tool right here that basically slides on over the tie rod and you can just kind of give it a snap with a ratchet and break that off. So now we just basically do the same process that we just did in reverse and we remember that we turned that outer tie rod off how many times? Uh, 21 and a half. 21 and a half. Okay. So we're going to unbox the uh, the cheap, uh, let's see what brand we got here. The cheap Drive Works brand. We've got uh, an outer and two inners. And the reason why we're going with the, the cheap replacement simply is because Junior is planning on trading up his car very soon. So uh, he didn't want to spend the extra money on the move part. So let's get at putting this thing back together. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that these things are roughly the same length from top to bottom and they look like they are. And when we go to put the lock nut on, we want to make sure that that lock nut goes down at least past where it came off here. Because remember, we've got to screw the outer tie rod on 21 and a half turns and then we lock it into place. So guys, you remember what we showed you before with, uh, with the weight on this tie rod, it was fairly loose. I can kind of move it around with one finger and it doesn't stay up on its own. We come in here to this new one. I've threaded it in and it actually takes a little bit of pressure to make that thing do what you want it to. And when you push it all the way up, it stays up there. So that's the sign that you're looking for. Anytime that you're doing an outer tie rod, it's always good to check the inner because if it is a little bit floppy, like this one here is, then over time or in the very near future, you're probably going to have to replace it, which means you're going to have to do another alignment. So alignments today are generally going to run you somewhere around 60, 70, 80 bucks, depending on where you get it done. You don't want to have to pay for that more than once. So now's the time to replace it when you get everything apart. All right, Alex, we're going to spin this on how many times? 21 and a half. Yep. Okay, so we got to find out where it starts first. Right there. So one, two, and we're time lapse the rest of it. Twenty-one and a half. And by my math, she slides right in the hole, just like that. So we'll just slide our castle nut on there. And we'll take our trusty speedy torque wrench and tighten that up to about uh, 15 ugga duggas. If you don't know what that means, go watch one of Rust Belt Mechanics last videos, about two videos ago. Also not lines up with your hole and your new cotter pin will slide right in there and we're good. All right, so we've got the uh, new inner and outer on. We've put some grease in the outer. And again, it surprises me that there's a grease nipple for this cheaper uh, tie rod because normally you get the cheap ones are not greasable or not serviceable. So that one's got it. And uh, while we had the grease gun out, we greased up all the ball joints as well on this side and on the other side. Now, way in there on this uh, on this boot, there is a little uh, CV boot style clamp that holds those boots into place. Now, I will usually just cut them off with the death wheel and replace it with a zip tie. They kind of snap in there and lock into place somewhat. And uh, once it's uh, on there, it's probably not going anywhere. The zip tie is just kind of a backup because we all need protection. Say what? So now we're just gonna go over to the other side and get that one done. I'm gonna let Junior do all the work this time and see if he remembered or learned anything from this one. So Junior is working away at getting this tie rod off and uh, 
I have to ask, Junior, this is what you've told me you wanted to do for the rest of your life. How do you like it so far? It's not bad. You're like 10 minutes in and you think it's not bad? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Junior graduates high school this year, and uh, once he's out of uh, high school, he's going to come back and work for me for the summer, and sometime between now and then, we're going to try and determine whether or not he wants to go to trade school this year, or wait another year, or see what's going on. All right, so we're just getting ready to spin the old outer tie rod back on, and how many turns, Alex? 21. All right. Let it rip, tater chip. So it's about here. Oh, you gotta find out where it's locking or where it's starting. Okay. Where's it catching right there? Okay, so start there. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, what we'll do is just pop it right back into the socket. Put that nut on there. It's hand tight. Okay, now take your castle nut and spin her back on there. And once you get that cinched up, I'll grab the uh, pry bar and pry down on it. You can tighten up so you can't tighten any further. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now just make sure that your castle nut, see how it's got spaces in it? Yeah. You gotta make sure that's lined up with the hole, which is going this way, so it's gotta keep turning that way just a hair more. And there you have it, two inners and one outer on a 2009 Dodge Avenger. And Junior helped. Remember that video? It, but the guy who caught the squirrel in the car? Oh yeah. You don't have to, whatever, but it helps. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need Junior's, he Junior's help today, but it helps. Anyways, we're gonna get the wheels back on this vehicle and uh, Get the tools all cleaned up and Junior is then going to do an oil change on the car by himself. He's done that before, he knows exactly what he's doing. And uh, then, I guess he's done. We will book an appointment at the alignment shop on Monday and uh, get him in there and get that all straightened away so that he's not gonna be wearing his summer tires when he swaps those out. So, we're about to end this video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of father and son bonding time working on Junior's car, getting those tie rods fixed up. He's gonna finish up with this oil change and I'm gonna go home and get some supper started because mama is away tonight and uh, us boys are fending for ourselves. So I think it's gonna be throwing a pizza in the oven night kind of night. Anyways, there are four links in the description box below. I hope that you guys can uh, take advantage of checking those out. The first one being bonfire.com. The second one is straight six fans page who is my co-host for the Thursday evening live feed. It's all about cars, it's all about YouTube, and I hope that if you guys are into cars and YouTube, that you might get something out of it by sharing it with your friends or learning a little bit of something so that you can further on your YouTube career to monetization or just for the fun of it. Guys, this, the new t-shirts that I have at my bonfire.com store, read across the front, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless, and don't forget, check out Uzo Lou Garage. I'm gonna set up a link right here Check him out. He's got some great videos. He's trying to reach 1,000 subscribers. He could use your help. Tell him old car auto guy sent you. I know this is hopeless. Moving in slow motion. Trying to control my thoughts. But I can't stop our bar talk. This is a no go. I just can't take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go.